Jesus. <coughs> Good evening, everybody. Uh, call this uh, Recording meeting. in progress. I'll call this meeting for June the 18th, 2024 to order. Result of the agenda for the June 18th, 2024 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, second by Councillor Powell. All in favor? It's carried. I want to welcome back uh, student counselor Dominga Kompama. I understand that uh, she's uh, last visit for her as she's graduating, so congratulations to you. Thank you. <clears throat> Three, resolved that the minutes of the June 4, 2024 regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Councillor Powell, second by Councillor Boychuk. Any discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Okay, four of your receptions, delegations, 4.1. There's CFO Ganita and past Colonel Hardy Company, Mr. Hardy, in regards to the 2023 draft Canada Community uh, Building Fund Annual Expenditure Report. I don't know if we have CFO Ganita on there yet, but um, on the video, I, I don't know if he's on there yet. He would be the one to present the details, and I would present the audit. Yeah, reports. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. I never got the notification. Oh, there he is. <clears throat> so. Did somebody? Oh, no. Okay, CFO Ganita, Mr. Uh, Hardy is uh, is ready to to go here. Uh, you're gonna go first, Mr. Hardy, and then uh, Mr. Ganita will follow after. Sure. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, good evening everyone. This is the um, small part of the Town of Swan River audit. It has to do with, uh, uh, it's now called the Canada <coughs> Community Building Fund. Uh, used to be called the gas tax uh, rebate uh, fund, but um, we uh, audited. It's not uh, the same kind of uh, total wide scale audit that we do on the Town of Swan River. It's called an audit of compliance. So our audit report indicates that we have audited the Town of Swan River's compliance as of its year end, December 31st, 2023, with the criteria established by the terms and conditions of the Canada Community Building Fund Manitoba Municipal Agreement between the province of Manitoba and the Town of Swan River. So there is a, an agreement and there's certain criteria established within it. Uh, our audit report indicates that management's responsibility uh, is uh, they are responsible for compliance with the criteria established by the provisions of the agreement and for such internal control as management determines is necessary to ensure compliance, which is basically uh, the same as the internal controls of the uh, Town of Swan River. Our responsibility is to express an opinion on this compliance. We conducted our audit in accordance with Canadian generally accepted auditing <coughs> standards. Those standards require that we plan and perform an audit to obtain reasonable assurance whether the Town of Swan River has complied with the criteria established by the provisions of that agreement. And such an audit concludes examining on a test basis certain evidence supporting compliance and evaluating <coughs> the overall compliance with these criteria and where applicable assessing the accounting principles used and significant estimates made by management. And we believe that our uh, audit evidence that we have obtained is sufficient and appropriate for, for, to provide the basis for our opinion. And our opinion is that uh, the expenditure report presents fairly in all material respects the funding and expenditures for the year ended December 31st, 2023 in compliance with that agreement. And uh, once uh, Terry will, uh, Mr. Ganita will present his uh, numbers in the report. Uh, and once you have approved uh, the report, uh, then we'll issue signature on the audit report. Okay. See you full, Ganita. So the last page contains the report. And it shows uh, started the year with the unspent fund balance of 1.182 million. 
received 235,000 from the province, earned $61,000 of interest, spent 139,000 on local roads, and that's 125,000 for 2nd Street North, 7,400 for 13th Ave South and 3rd Street South Base Work, and 7,200 for sidewalks and then spent 22,000 on cultural infrastructure, which is paving the Veterans Hall parking lot. So that leaves $1.3 million unspent at the end of the year for future projects. And then the rightmost column shows the cumulative since the program first came out many years ago. Uh, the province has contributed $4 million monies have earned 164,000 of interest, 1.1 million has been spent on local roads, 500,000 on drinking water, 981,000 on wastewater, 230,000 on solid waste, cultural infrastructure, 22,000 and 31,000 on disaster mitigation. So 2.870 million has been spent from that, those monies so far. <clears throat> Any questions? <laughs> Being none, anything further, Mr. Uh, Hardy or Mr. Benita? I have nothing further. Okay. Nothing further. Would uh, council object if I move to four uh, to the uh, the resolution uh, to uh, to vote on that while Mr. Hardy is here? Okay. <clears throat> So that's under 10.2. Resolve the draft audited Canada Community Building Fund annual expenditure report for the year ended December 31st, 2023 be approved and the independent auditor's report thereon be received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Powell. Any discussion? All in favor? It's carried. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. <clears throat> All right, let's go back to the um, delegations, and next we have uh, Mr. Mahan, who wants to uh, discuss on tax incentives and development on, uh, sorry, on developments and renovations. So, Mr. Mahan. Thanks for Thank you. 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 There. Thank you. <coughs> oh man, it's always so. <sighs> All right. <clears throat> ready for me ready? anytime? Same okay. Time. Okay, so I'm here about a hot topic in Swan River, which is always taxes, but I have a little bit of a different spin on it. I'm really focused on kind of the economic development of Swan River and being a business owner, I have a different perspective maybe than what um, a resident would have, but we all have the kind of need and want to make Swan River a place that we want to, you know, have our kids stay and or just a great place to live. And I think we have some opportunities here that we can together work on to help create a more economic and uh, a prosperous community. So to introduce kind of what I'm proposing here, um, currently the town of Swan River put out a strategic plan. I, I won't read all this to you word for word. Uh, I've given it to you so that you could do that on your own, hopefully during the week. And then I'm hoping to have a chance to speak with you at the COW meeting, and then maybe we can put some ideas back and forth, but I think I have a, a decent little presentation here just to make it quick, and then all everything in here, hit me up anytime, I'm happy to talk about it. But uh, in your strategic plan, you're looking for economic and cultural development. It, right out of your strategic <coughs> plan is the at attraction and retention of business <coughs> is core to our economy. We have seen the need to make our community an attractive hub for business, um, yada, yada, yada conducting research on incentives, we are working to make Swan River an attractive place to do business. 
So that's part of your economic or your strategic plan for 2023 to 2028. And I think I have something to contribute to that. You currently have an incentive structure for people looking to build a business, uh, sorry, to build a commercial property and or a residential property. Uh, that was established in 2017. I feel like 2017 was maybe a little bit of a different um, setting in the Swan River Valley. I don't think that there was kind of this <coughs> safety concern or maybe some of that other negativity that was around. There was a little bit of negativity at that time. Statistics Canada was saying that we're shrinking, yada, yada, yada. But I don't think that some of the entrepreneurs in the area had a sense that, you know, this wasn't a great place to do business. Um, more recently, there's been quite a few closures in Swan River. Uh, it is disheartening for residents and or entrepreneurs but I think we have some opportunities to encourage people to invest. So seven years ago, I think there was a little bit different sediment. Um, on the second page, I've, I've included the table that's basically your current incentive program. So just to highlight something that, you know, I, I'm kind of talking to you about in this, this is the table one commercial, a $750,000 plus building with your current incentive program you would give two years of municipal taxes pro bono, so free, after the building is built. So as long as you apply and you meet the criteria, you'd be able to enjoy those two years tax-free. Um, currently, there has been three applications received in 2020, 2021 were two, 2022 were two, and 2023 there was no applications received. So effectiveness of this program, I mean, it's hard to say. Uh, there is a residential side to that. So I know every time I've come here, the town has presented me with the opportunity to apply for it. But anytime there's a grant, it always comes with a price. This isn't a grant, I guess, but it, it's a lot of work. So there could be some, some of the clarity in the actual proposal itself is maybe not maybe in layman's terms and or you know, CA, CB, CC, CD, it can be cumbersome for somebody to um, receive the benefits when they feel like they don't want to feel <coughs> foolish asking for something that they're not even a prospective person to apply for. Uh, so proposed changes, um, you know, I've got some ideas here. Some people will hear this and they'll think, oh my goodness, what are you thinking? But I think a really easy way to make something happen uh, quickly and get your strategic plan moving would be just to double the current incentives. So what does that take? Just times two. There's no new, there's nothing new to be written. There's nothing new to be talked about. It's just take what you have. Say I'm giving you double the incentives for a proposed amount of time. And somebody like me would go from having a two year incentive to a four year. Now immediately, somebody's gonna say, oh my gosh, how are we gonna do that? The town's gonna lose so much money. So I got an example coming up for you here. Um, but before I do that, I just wanna highlight, there is a tipping point in, in kinda you know, people's behavior. Uh, I've given an example here about lotteries <coughs> and the example to, to, to say it simply is, if there's a jackpot for a million dollars for the 649, well, maybe two people here would go buy that ticket for a million bucks. But if I said it's 100 billion, I can almost guarantee all of us would go get $1 ticket. Why not? It's just a tipping point. You need something to encourage you to have a big enough incentive to go outside of the norm and create some change. So we need to do something big enough that's gonna get people to not like hold on to their money. And in the current climate, you need something big enough to make people say, okay, well, how is this gonna help me versus how is this gonna hurt the town? Um, I think when you're sitting in the town's perspective and I said you four years tax-free currently I do have a table here I guess maybe um, I guess I didn't number the pages but three pages in four pages in it's kind of a property tax table and it's an example of uh, two properties that are potentially right now they're in lieu their uh, properties to be built on Curry Road, which is over by Pit 24-7. So both of them have uh, plans that are drafted 
and they were assessed by the assessment branch in Swan River and then I figured out the um, taxes on the buildings with the help of uh, Mr. Ganita and using the current mill rate. So and I have the property assessed from last year and I have it also assessed from this year. So from last year to this year, um, the, the, it only increased by 2.06%. So it wasn't a huge increase, um, but I have done this table showing an increase of that same 2% throughout the 10 year period. So for example, year one, you know, right now if I built those properties or somebody else or whoever built those properties, property one would have created $24,000 of revenue, uh, tax revenue, and property two would create 22,000. So a total of 46,000. After 10 years, uh, the properties combined, obviously it goes up a little bit because of that 2% inflation. So after 10 years, it's $56,000 each year that you'd be generating. So after 10 years, it's $505,000 for the town of Swan River. After 50 years, which most buildings have a 50 year lifespan, it's over $14 million of income going towards the town of Swan River. So if I said to you, I've got a person interested in building a property, um, but they need an excuse to do it. And you said, okay, I'll give you two years tax free, but that wasn't enough for them. For me specifically, I'm property two on this chart. So it's $22,000. $22,000 for two years is $44,000. Now, if the town of Swan River here is, we're losing $44,000, that sounds awful. But the truth of the matter is, right now the property that I hold, you're only getting $900. So it's unrealized potential, it's unrealized gain until there is a larger asset built on that. It's literally 22 times the profit that you will make if you can get me to put a building on there. If I don't build, it's still that 900 um, until you potentially see something like put on that property, you're, you're only achieving basically a, a 5% of the potential that you could earn from that. Now, if you said to me, I'll give you four years, I'll double the incentive. It may not be enough for everybody. It may be enough for me, it may not. But for a lot of people, I think it would encourage them more so to, to pull the trigger on something like that. So now we're talking $88,000 that you would not earn essentially, right? But if that building is never <coughs> built, you do not have $88,000. You've got $4,000 in four years. So it's kind of like the properties that maybe have come up recently for sale. Until something is built on them, there's unrealized gain there. Now you say, well, the town has lost $88,000, we gave it away. But as an entrepreneur, when I'm starting a business and I'm taking the risk, I have to build that building, the bank's already like, man, come on. Every single other person in the industry, accountants, everybody, they will tell you, don't spend your money in Swan River, take it to another area. That's where you're gonna see returns for what you're, you're investing. And I, I'm not saying that to be rude, I'm saying that to be honest, like it's, it's a big push for everybody to spend your money elsewhere. In my world, it's $88,000 of actual savings. Because the second I build that building, if there was no tax incentive, I'm getting $22,000 charged to me. In your world, if there's no building built there, you're only getting 1,000. So there really is no money being lost to the town. When this initial plan was written up, I believe garbage was included with the taxes. Um, now we pay for garbage separately. The roads are already there. The lights are already there. The infrastructure is already being taken care of. The lots are simply there. You're just not seeing that 22% increase of revenue. So for me, $88,000 over four years, putting a building down is huge for the bank. It makes them feel more comfortable. It's huge for me as a business owner. It's something that could get me over the hurdle to take the risk because as much as it sounds like, oh yeah, you're gonna make tons of money. Everybody's, everybody's got a great idea, but we all know that making money is not as easy as it sounds. So for me, it's a realized $88,000 savings. For you, it's an unrealized $88,000 for four years after that contract ends. And potentially, if both those properties got built, $14 million in 50 years. And that's if, if it stays at 2% inflation. So, you know, some of the, some of the benefits I kind of laid out there for me, um, some of the financial implications, I don't see a lot of cons, but maybe I'm not part of the town and I can't see all those. I honestly feel like the infrastructure is already there. The road's already there. It's already being cleared. Everything's already being taken care of. The only thing that I could see being uh, a, a real challenge would be the administration, administrative challenge. So having somebody in the office, if this did take off a little bit, to have to 
you know, last year there was zero applications. Well, that was pretty easy. What if this year you got 40 applications? That's a lot of work. So there needs to be some sort of um, mindset that yes, this could create some challenges, especially if we came with a really progressive one. Like I would really, would be awesome if you're like half taxes, 10 years. That would just, you get some revenue, I get some less, it's just a win-win. Or like, you know, five years free, then it'd be like, let's go. I know, I know it'd be very, you need, oh, we could really do this guys, this could be fun. Um, financial implications, like I said, I see that one being the big one. Um, but you know, increased construction activity, increased property aesthetics, community engagement and interest, overall business growth, and the thing that I maybe don't emphasize enough is, I'm gonna build this building. Well, I can't run a building that size myself. I need to have at least three full-time workers plus all the part-time workers. So does this other person that wants to build their building. So with that comes incomes who need houses, plus we're spending all the money locally. Every dollar spent goes five times around. We're not building things and bringing them in. This is a, this is a plan that says you have to build it in Swan River. You can't truck a mobile home in there and just park it there. So it's an opportunity to, to really create some, some short-term growth and I don't see it costing the town anything. It's, it's short-term loss for long-term gain and it's unrealized loss. Like it's not really a loss until, well, to me it's not a loss at all, it's a win-win. But um, yeah, so it, it, in, in consideration of this, um, I would like you guys to uh, take, a, take a look at this Take your time, give it a read. If you have any questions, I'd, I'd love to come back to a, a, a cow meeting is what you call it. Yeah. I think there's a little more time for discussion at that. But I wanted to get this in your hands because um, I know that there are some people who are looking for a reason to uh, invest in the community. And I want to give them a reason. I want to go to them and say, look, the town said, let's go. And then get them excited and spend some money and hopefully create a little bit of uh, encouragement for not only you know all the citizens, but especially maybe some of those younger people. I know that most of the students that are graduating, they're all looking to go other places because what's going on here? You know, is the town dying? <coughs> and I don't want to be negative. That, that's very negative, but I just want to be honest. You know, I want to see people say, this place is booming. I want to stay here. I want to do that. I want to be a part of that. And that all comes down to small business. And small business, it's not easy. Um, anybody that's been a part of it, they understand that, you know, long term, it's a long term game. You got to think, this is going to take me 30 years and then I might retire. It's not, I'm going to spend three years and just cash out, which that would be beauty. That, yeah, if you got that plan, boom, me up. I'm in, I'm investing. But it, it's really a long term game. So I want other people like the town to also think of that in the same timeline with me. It's a 30 year plan. So. Yes, there's four years of potential whatever, but then there's another 26 years of cash in the bank. Yeah. All right, <clears throat> thank you, and uh, okay. good presentation, <laughs> by the way. Uh, we uh, you know, encourage your spirit and, yeah. and uh, your enthusiasm. Um, council will look at this and then uh, discuss it, but we will uh, we can ask some questions right now. Oh, sure. Yep. We're not going to get into debate about that. No. But we can talk about it a little bit. We have a little bit more time, and then we have to move on. Yep, sorry. And then we can invite you, if that works, to a cow meeting in the future. So, yeah. anyways, Councilor Medley. I really like what I'm hearing. I'm looking forward to reading through it in more depth and to continue with the cow discussion with you. <coughs> I would also mention that in our strategic plan under the governance and customer focused services includes create citizen idea groups, which I think this kind of fits into as well. It's citizen driven. I understand that you're looking to expand, move your business, build, but your plan isn't just to benefit you. It's a plan that's going to benefit the entire community, the entire town, and anybody else who essentially wants to follow in your footsteps and make progress happen. I didn't highlight that very well, but in there there is also other opportunities. Um, I know that when you do buy a property, if you want to renovate it, instantly everybody hates taxes. It's just one of those things. And somebody says, I'm not going to renovate, I'm just going to leave it there because then my taxes are going to go up. So you could also have some sort of incentive where your taxes will not increase and you can renovate your property, bringing up the overall aesthetic of the valley of the community, making people 
more encouraged to want to, you know, do their own renovations and or build new properties here. Um, and the residential side, I didn't touch on really at all either, which is, yeah, part of that program. Uh, Councillor Dippin Memorial and then Councillor White. Um, first off, wow, thank you. Um, this, as being a number of guys myself, I get what you're saying. Um, it's very appreciative that someone from the other side, the grass or the fence, um, being an entrepreneur, is putting the different lens to the tax incentive. And yes, definitely, I want to sit down as probably all of council to look at different options out there because it's exactly what it says. Like your math is, it's math is math. It's either right or wrong. I was and so scared of you. I was like, oh my gosh, you're going to tear me a new one. Uh, <laughs> and exactly, if you don't have it, and if you're looking towards the future, sometimes you get the narrow fix, well, look two years down the road. Well, for the town survival, we got to look at the 5, 10, 20 years down the future. And if the numbers don't work. Yeah, but if you want to stay the narrow mind and look two years down, it's like I said, we, we can't look at the the lottery business like the what's it called? what's that big lottery in the states the, the billionaire club or whatever um, where you want great big the big yeah the powerball yes. great big super business here that's going to look after the tax problems for the town that's not happening that's just the reality the town needs to survive on the small business. Uh, people and the mantras we don't want I'm just speaking for myself the Walmart sort of Canadian tires that comes in and shuts everybody down and then you're just stuck with those two and then you're left with the handbag when they decide to pack up and leave town themselves you need to foster the small business groups um, like yourself that um, has been around in the valley for decades and has been proven to be uh, a smart entrepreneur um, that uh, can bring these and like I said put the different lens to the numbers that we're so used to looking at it from one way, but using our own strategic plan to convince us to get into that this discussion. So it's much appreciated, and I want to sit down and have that discussion further. Yes, Councilor. I like 426625 And I see this as similar to planting a tree. But I have a plant with a spruce tree. I'm not going to see it grow. I'll see it grow up to fruition. But others will, and others will appreciate so, born and raised in a very small business family, 10, 20 men, women. My dad would love this. My dad likes it. I like it. Right. <coughs> uh, I'm just curious, have you done any research on other towns in, in any way else you've done? I have. I figured you had, but... I'm presenting you a progressive program here. I'd love to say that everybody else is smoking you out of the water and just crushing you. So Nipawa was a point of interest for me of, of possibly expanding. Um, so I worked quite a bit with them. Um, and then somebody else in my family is looking at the opportunity there for themselves. Um, and our incentive program currently isn't horrible. It's not insane, but it's actually okay. It's, it's really wordy and, and it's like splitting hairs instead of making it very simple. Um, and some of the actual dollar values, like you have to build a $750,000 building in order to get that first year tax-free kind of thing. Uh, other towns are maybe a little bit lower, but in general, you're in the you're you're playing the game. Like the 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 initial plan there, it's not horrible, but a place like Nipawa has something going for it, which it's the fastest growing town under 100,000 people in Canada. I'm pretty sure I could I could have to maybe check that, but I think it is. It's top five for sure. Third. In Canada? Manitoba. Something in Canada. It's top five in Canada. Like, it's it's booming. So they have that going for them, right? They don't necessarily need you to, to, to develop. Where here, we have don't have that to really bolster business to say, I've got a little bit of incentive for you. Come do it. We need somebody to say, i got a wicked incentive for you. The risk is low. Profits are high. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Anybody else? Uh, I would just, we spoke a little bit about this before, but I, I definitely love the idea. And um, I think you kind of touched on uh, the renovation portion for the, the existing um, businesses or even potential residential owners, because I think that's something else that if we were to do something like this, um, I'd really want to, to think along those lines as well, because I just feel like 
they're going to be looking for something too. And, and I think if we can put our thinking caps on and, and try and uh, be inclusive to everyone, not just new, but to help existing kind of maybe bolster, uh, I think it's a great idea. And uh, very thankful for you coming in to present to us. Thanks for being open. Appreciate it. All right. Well, yeah. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll be in touch. Awesome. Yeah, it's a good, it's not amazing, but it's a good enough read that's worth taking your time. So we'll follow up and thank you guys. And you're more than welcome to uh, hang out here too for the while as well. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to keep grinding up here. <laughs> <laughs> that's a no. Yeah, I know. All right, thank you. All right, so moving on to six, uh, 6.1. Result of letter from the Association for Community Living, Swan River Branch, dated June the 12th, 2024, be received. Moved by Councillor Wojciech, seconded by Councillor White. Any discussion? Councillor uh, Medwood. Uh, yeah, they're inviting representative from council. Is anyone available to attend? I typically go to that. Yeah. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? 6.2 result letter from the municipal and northern relations dated June the 13th 2024 regarding the 2024 municipal operating grant be received moved by Councilor Boychuk seconded by Councilor Powell any discussion at the memorial uh, well it's it's good to see um, that the uh, current New government is actually continuing on with the uh, recommended uh, amount from last year and the agreed upon or escalator uh, for it so that we can start having some predictable funding going forward. And um, so now that they're putting some actual words to letters, so it's going on way. So appreciate it for that. Yeah. Anything further? Councilor Medwood. They mentioned a report being requested. Is this something new? And if so, will it mean have time to get it completed by the end of the month? Uh, which report? Where is this? It's the last paragraph there. Page two. Online. Oh, it's not new. I've been doing it for several years. It doesn't take long. Thank you, Steve Oganina. Anything, any uh, further discussion? <clears throat> All in favor? It's carried. 6.3. Result, result of the building permits 25 through, uh, sorry, 25, 24 through 30, 24 with a total estimated value of 313,500 be received. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor White. Any discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 7, 7.1. Resolve the Director of Public Works, uh, sorry, Resolve the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? Memorial. Um, a couple things uh, regarding, I believe the, uh, I guess, tender for the uh, pavement work, uh, asphalt work is that's been completed, correct? Yeah. And that's going to be when are they going to be in town? Uh, Mid July is what they tentatively are scheduled for. Okay. And then I see here uh, you're contacting Amy regarding Ross Street, the station pumps. Is there an issue with that? Uh, there was an issue with the power outage, so when the power goes out, mm -hmm. the pump is locking out, and then the next one functions normally, and then there's three pumps there. Uh, but the last power outage, there must have been a flicker, because it the power went on and off three times, so then all the pumps locked out until the float, like there's a manual pill float in there. And then once it got to that level, then the pump kicks on, but 
because of like there's protection around that pill, just like a bit of a steel cage, but because of the material that's in the water, um, it kind of goes around the pill, so it kicks on, but then it doesn't kick off, pumps it down. And if our guys don't get there by the time it pumps it down to the like the suction bells, then a little bit of air gets in, and then there's some fussing around because then they need to manually turn them off let it build up to a high level so that the water pressure forces the air out and then pump it down. And uh, this time it took one time, but sometimes it takes a couple times before they can finally get that over air through. Uh, so we want to have them look at the programming as to why when there's a power outage that the pump doesn't come back on normally. Because normally if it's just one power outage, then issue hasn't come up but there was the three flickers so that's why it became an issue okay and then last question uh, with the the generator project at the water treatment plant yeah water treatment plant uh, we're waiting on the transfer switch has that been all arrived and installed now so yeah that's installed so that worked at the last uh, um, power outage it did power the Ross Street lift station it's just that there must have been the flickers of the power, but it powered it up so that the pumps did work. Otherwise, the pumps wouldn't have pumped. Our guys would have had to get their, uh, get the generator going. But yeah, that everything works smoothly on that one. Okay, so, so uh, now that that project's completed, basically when the power goes out like it did in areas of the valley and in town this weekend, we avoided the... Uh, potential boil water advisory due to lack of pressure, correct? Yeah, yeah, because we had one, I can't remember, it was two weeks ago, uh, or just under two weeks ago, and I was just down the street, the car went out, it drove there, and everything was humming away, so it uh, worked properly. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, for the discussion of Councillor Ledwood, did you have your hand up yeah. before? Yeah. Okay, so Councillor White. The EMF things which we have <coughs> the budget, would that have communication about that to EMF? Yeah, they, yeah I just have contract? some paperwork to fill it with them. Pardon? I just have some paperwork to fill it with them. Yes, you need to listen to your short list? Yeah. Okay, yeah, thank you. For the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. 7.2 Result of the 2000, May 2024 Swan River Handy Transit Van Report be received. Moved by Councillor Medwick, I'm sorry, Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Medwick. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. CEO and Council Reports. Uh, Council Reports will start with Councillor Medwick. I attended the Swan Valley Communities at CARE AGM that is also done in conjunction with the interagency. I spoke to the Community Safety Wellbeing Survey and gave everybody a heads up. Well, actually, I spoke to the Community Safety Wellbeing Plan and Project um, and then gave a heads up about the survey that will be coming out soon to uh, <coughs> well, let everybody know and encourage everyone to do their part to make sure we get as much feedback from a diverse demographic as we can. For the community safety well-being, uh, I attended a few meetings there. Uh, we had our second advisory committee meeting and we're currently working on establishing the framework and values for moving forward uh, on the advisory level. A utility meeting, uh, which was also further discussed in the cow on the Lagoon and Public Utility Board rate reviews, and I am currently, well, we are all currently, waiting for admin to fit in, uh, doing a, compiling a report on the difficulties and barriers to working with public utility boards and any challenges with rate review applications or request processes to see if there's something that council can do to help aid in smoothing out that process and making sure it's happening at a more frequent uh, rate rather than 10 or 15 years apart. Uh, we had the cow meeting, uh, lots of things discussed there, and in the services to seniors. Uh, we had our meeting today and a couple questions came up. One was, will the town be utilizing our summer students 
to mark and paint uneven sidewalks to assist our seniors and folks with mobility or sight impairments that may trip or stumble on some of those uneven surfaces. It was spoken about before. They just wanted to know if that is in fact going to happen. <coughs> Thank you. And the other question that came up from that meeting was we received a letter from the CAO in recognition of the letter that we sent inquiring about handyman rates and usage. And it indicated that it, there would be a report compiled for council to look at on tonight's agenda, which it's not here. So I'm here to follow up and just kind of inquire, make sure it's still on the plate, and when we write services to seniors, might be able to definitely uh, get a response back. It's definitely on the plate, but it, it unfortunately we did not make tonight's meeting because I couldn't get the report just due to the amount of items that came on my plate last week. So potentially July 2nd? Or? I would say for sure July 2nd. Okay. Yeah. And I can, I can uh, reach out to comments. Okay, perfect. Thank you. That's all right. <coughs> Council White. Yeah, the special, <coughs> special privilege on uh, June 7th to uh, attend the UCN pinning ceremony for I think six, seven, five young uh, Valley residents uh, graduated from their LPN program and hopefully they will follow up uh, and work in our community. I talked to all of them personally and offered uh, some support, monetary and otherwise, and I want to thank uh, Jeff Morio for being a major designer and the template of the offers. And we're optimistic that some of them will in fact stay with us. So, uh, uh, a special privilege and, and honor to me. And uh, Deputy Mayor, Mayor Moro, Moro spoke there also, and uh, far more eloquent than I. I think, I think they made some of those monetary offers. Like maybe he was offering more than I was supposed to, but I'll deal with that when the time comes. Maybe. Uh, the cow meeting, uh, the animal protection concerns, which is pretty positive. Uh, the budget, I'm sure, that he'll be attending on June the 11th. And today I had a meeting with Megan uh, Gray, who manages the uh, primary care clinic, and at the moment she has uh, three doctors. Uh, two of them are going to be graduating very soon. They're, they are doctors, resident twos, and uh, we're trying to arrange a lunch or a tour for some of them. That's, uh, we'll look after that as a medical services team. But Dr. Kish is a uh, daughter of Scott Kish, who's a medical doctor in Dauphin. So she's a close person, close to our community, so we're being optimistic. Dr. Saab, he's going to be here for this week, so, and leaving at the end of the week, so it's a bit of a problem for me, so hopefully our team will find somebody to take up the coffee, take up the leaf for lunch, whatever it may be. And we have the other lady, Dr. Chegley, is coming in uh, soon, and that's the woman who said, yeah, we'll pop for you our uh, accommodations for three or four weeks, later. but in return, we wanted a, a couple of hours, an hour with her, and what are your intentions, what do you, what do you like, what can we offer that would bring you to us. So uh, I think those are good things, there's three young docs and hopefully we we'll get one of the three. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilor Paula. Okay, so uh, as Karina or Councilor Medwin has said, Swan Valley Interagency had their meeting on June 13th and we attended that. Um, community Care AGM was there as well. There's some great, good information to come out with it, like you were saying. Um, that was a library board a few times, um, just kind of going through with our head library and everything is going well there and things are moving along. It's really great to have that, have that spot filled. Um, just one other thing was the Spawn Valley Interagency had their ID clinic on June the 13th, which is really great because Service Canada was there as well as like there's Canada Revenue was there and so it was it was amazing to have them there to ask those questions. Like they were, there was an actual physical person, you weren't calling anybody. And so you could do your birth certificates, you could do your everything was there. Um, status cards, it was just everything available. And it was really a well attended thing. I think we had over 200 people probably come through. And uh, hope to do that on a yearly basis there as well. So, yeah. Just to, to comment to the Council of Policy Club, there's another, I think, Federal government MP is going to be up here, I believe, in July and do a very similar proposal how to make up. We'll have three or four staff there to go through with you how to do your passport. And things like that. Take the pictures there, they do everything for you. So once I get that information, I'll forward it to Council. Okay. 
Deputy Mayor Morio. Uh, just a couple things. On the 7th, uh, on behalf of His Worship, I attended the uh, UCN pinning ceremony uh, to bring you readings on behalf of the town and uh, congratulate the, the four LPN uh, students that are graduating and about to write their uh, college exams. Um, I understand there are a couple of them that are staying in the valley, but uh, I think there's a couple that are moving on to others, but the uh, all of branch to bring them back was extended to hopefully bring them back to the, the valley. Um, 11th was our committee of the whole. On the 12th of the evening, uh, as part of this uh, Swan Valley uh, Fire Board, uh, we met with uh, other municipalities, uh, governance bodies for their fire departments to uh, review some of the uh, concerns that uh, one of our uh, municipalities had with the tentative mutual aid agreement. We worked through that and we became, uh, we came to an agreement. So there is a draft revised tentative agreement uh, sent to all governance bodies to uh, bring forward to their next uh, uh, meetings for approval and move on. So, uh, but I think uh, there's a hesitancy um, for a number of the governance bodies or municipalities to bring it forward until one party actually passes it at their um, at their table <coughs> and then it will be brought forward to the rest instead of more delays um, from three or four of the five passing and then have to go back to the wheel. So, and just uh, uh, as part of that, um, uh, the CT scanner update, uh, there is people, um, the, the facility and shared health diagnostics is actually doing some test scanning on there. Um, as of uh, a week and a half ago, 50 plus uh, scans on people have gone through the machine. Um, to get its certification because they have to use some training and uh, scan on every angle or whatever that's in the book uh, for it to receive its certification and teach the staff. So once that's all completed, then uh, I've reached out to uh, Shared Health and PMH where we could potentially have a, a grand opening official ceremony ribbon cutting thing to bring that project to uh, completion here. So um, as you probably noticed that aircraft uh, that uh, perimeter flies is not flying in as much uh, lately because that's because the scan is actually going. So, yeah, so, close. Uh, so hopefully it picks up where other communities are bringing them here for scan um, instead of waiting. I, I don't know, so, but uh, just a, an update that that machine is starting in its early stage of functionality. So, so, and that's all I have. You'll be there. You're not hearing much of an announcement so much because of the blackout period right now. So uh, we'll hear more of that in a little bit. So ten minutes. Yeah, I was going to say it's going to be over right away. So, uh, Councillor Boyce. Oh, most everything's been covered. Uh, again, was at the town meeting with everyone. We did have a general government meeting on June 10th, and then uh, earlier today a recreation meeting. Prior to this meeting, uh, I've been working uh, at getting all the uh, gift bag uh, pieces put together for the AMM district meeting, so delivered a bunch of stuff here today, and uh, this evening again picked up another load. Uh, so we're getting there, there's just a few more things to come, uh, but otherwise I think it's coming along nicely and I'm looking forward to uh, seeing how they're received next week. And that's it for me for that. Okay. I know for myself in the last week, especially, I've been really consumed with meeting with the Reeves uh, you know, over the GIS, and we're having a section of that in, in, in camera. But we did, uh, Mr. Pumo and I had a chance to drive out to Minnetonas and sit with our councillors uh, counselors in the Reeves uh, to speak on, on some clarity on it. So hopefully, we can, we can make some movement on that uh, this evening. And I believe that our councillors will be uh, discussing it as well tonight. Um, Councilor Boychuk, I have to thank you for all the work that you've been helping with the Parkland District meeting, and and uh, yeah, just been really good. And uh, I can't wait till we have that uh, event because we uh, we've we really got some good things going on right now. So, and everything is a go with that. So uh, yeah, that day will be here very soon. Uh, last night um, we had a Swan Valley Health Facilities Foundation meeting. 
and uh, I see not all the municipalities of well, the levies in, I'm sure ours will come in very soon. Uh, but one of the things that we talked about was the monies that the Smile Cookie campaign has brought in. Mm -hmm. And um, as you know, they raised about $15,000 here just this last campaign. But since 2013, they, uh, they have contributed or, or donated through that program almost $80,000 to the Swan Valley Health Facilities Foundation that goes towards buying equipment that may not necessarily be purchased for uh, our hospitals and, and, uh, and lodges and through Benito and Swan River. Uh, but uh, yeah, so it's, it's been a great thing. And it's more than 80 because the program started before then. And Pandra couldn't give me all the numbers, but it's, it's still a, it's a significant uh, amount of money and we thank them for everything that they do for us. Um, Stu, yeah, go ahead. I, I know you do these things. Would, would you be writing a letter on behalf of council relative to that fantastic contribution to our community? Okay, yeah. It'd be lovely. Yeah. Uh, student Councilor Kampam, I'll uh, let you, uh, if you have anything that you want to report or, or say. Um, well, um, you might have seen me at the Folk Fest this year. I was recently in charge of uh, a booth represented by home country in Chile, uh, and I had a lot of help from um, from my family and, and family friends, but um, I bring it up because it was just something, uh, uh, just a moment where I was handed a lot of responsibility and uh, I enjoyed it and I, I had a lot of fun. And I think it was a really great event for the community as a whole and, you know, for kids, for families, for old people, you know, everybody. And I think a lot of people, you know, took something away from it. I, I never heard anybody anybody uh, say anything bad about that event. So I was really glad I got to particip uh, participate in that recently. Um, other, I don't I don't have much like official business news like you guys, but I, I, I am excited to be graduating this Thursday. Uh, it's, it's a weird thing to, to say, because <laughs> I always felt much younger than this. Uh, I remember thinking like, 13, Jesus, 13, that's such an old age. And now I am graduating, and the day after I'm, I'm turning 18. So uh, right now is just a big uh, time of like, big life changes. Absolutely. So I'm really excited for, for the future, and I really look forward to to it, and also just really happy for what this, this time has done for me. Um, I think I really uh, in, enjoyed my time here in Swan River, and I'm, I'm going to be moving away from university, but I'm, I definitely look forward to to coming back and getting to do community events again in the future. So, yeah, that's about it. Awesome. <laughs> oh, oh, and one last thing. I, I'm really glad that I was able to be student counselor. I, I know I didn't do much. I know I skipped a few meetings. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I think this was a really wonderful opportunity, just getting to know how it works, and if I ever did want to do something uh, like this as an adult, then I'd at least have like um, you know something to reference. So it's like this is what's supposed to happen. This is correct procedure, um, terminology, etc. So I'm really glad I had this opportunity, and I don't know who would be the student counselor next year, or if there would be one. But I I do have uh, some friends of mine in mind so that I I could. Uh, introduce us to them. So. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, we thank you very much again for <coughs> stepping up. Not everybody is willing to do that, but we do thank you for uh, stepping up and being part of us, even though you know just you know a few ones uh, were missed. But also, congratulations on your graduation on on Thursday. <coughs> it is a milestone, a big step in your life, and it can be scary too. But I, I'm sure you'll be perfectly fine. And, uh, and a happy birthday on Friday. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, moving on then to the CAO's report. Anything on that? I have a written report for council. Uh, just some highlights, I guess. Thank Domingo for. I know the evenings are tough to make. I don't think I could have done it in routines. <laughs> but even even to 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 state your opinion in front of council takes courage. Good job. 
Uh, and also I'd like to welcome McCulloch Consulting this week to the office to be doing the interviews for our 360 reviews. Uh, welcome. Uh, and again, kudos to, to Councillor Boychuk and the committee for the June AMM. It's, you know, I know the AMM is corresponding with us telling us that it's going to be, a, they're looking forward to it. Uh, I've been contacted by Business View magazine. Uh, Town of Swinomer is being considered for a 10 page series on being the best managed company, or sorry, municipality under 7,000. So we'll be, we'll be setting up meetings with them and I'll probably be delegating a few tasks to some economic development to the committee members to, to help me gather some info. Uh, and that's it. I can take any questions on my report. Do you like the sounds of that uh, Business View magazine? Um, my question is the $2,900 approximate budget. Do we have that accounted for in our 2024 budget, or where is that going to be coming from? Uh, I think uh, when we know a little more about it, uh, to see exactly what, what the advertising costs, what we're going to get out of it, obviously a 10 page report on this being municipality may be worth it, but uh, I think myself and the CF will come recommend to council when we want to get that one. in time. Council Borcha. I think there's quite a bit of savings from the generator installation we were not saying earlier, so yeah. there's yeah. There's options. Yeah. Okay, that's everything. Anything else? Okay. All right, so then we shall move on. 10, 10.1. Oh, sorry. This one. Go back here. 8. 8.1. Result of the Northwest Regional Library audited financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2023. Be received. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. Yes, I have a question that's probably best answered maybe by CFO Kanita. Um, I did a read through on this and I'll admit I didn't have the time to sit down and really try to wrap my head around it. So the question I have is, are we back on track for being successful and from a financial perspective, are there any concerns that we need to be aware of as a council for the library moving forward? What? I don't know if Councillor Ned or sorry, uh, Mr. Ganita can answer that, but Mr. Ganita, do you have any comment on that? And I think maybe the chair or the I guess you're the chair can comment on it. Yeah, it's best for the chair to answer that. That's okay. right. Well, I think we definitely are moving ahead. Um, we haven't had to pay for or had to pay for um, a head librarian for the last eight pretty much seven months, I think seven months, that someone's been doing it for pretty much just free. So I think we definitely save there, and I think that we are, what we're, what we're moving ahead with with our head library, and I think things are all, are definitely, are definitely moving forward. So we're back on track? Oh yeah, excellent. <coughs> okay, any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? It's carried. All right, 10, 10.1. Resolves the accounts as follows. We hereby approve for payment. General accounts checks number 31650 to number 31715, totaling $111,736.25. It's listed on Schedule A. Checks number 31669 was voided. Uh, was prepared in error. Number two, payroll accounts checks number 5455 to number 5459, totaling $126,633.89 as listed on Schedule B, and direct deposits payments totaling $125,063.96 as listed on Schedule C. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. Yeah, I have a few. Uh, 31651, Seaham's Lock and Key, 560, if I can just get uh, an explanation as to where and what that's for. Uh, 31656, Royal Bank Visa Statement, if we can have that broken down. Uh, 31657, uh, 
SR Bailiff and Collection Services for 135. Uh, 31659 Wolseley, Canada. I'll uh, refresh my memory. I think I've seen it before. Uh, 116520. Uh, 31663 Formal Motors for 11,642.46. If I can see the breakdown on that. Uh, 31665 Napa Auto Parts for 1,505.49. Uh, 31669 Swan Valley School Division, uh, 31670 Valley Bearing and Auto, uh, 31671 uh, Tori Werbecki for 450, 31673 the Royal Bank Visa Statement, uh, if I can get a breakdown on that one, 31674 Conrad's Convenience Store for 1528.35. 31675 Cook Brothers Cartage for 5343.80. 31677 ABC Fire and Safety Equipment Limited for 548.80. 31678 Air Liquid Canada for 511.21. 31679 ALS Canada 15 or sorry 115064. Uh, 31681 Gardwine North for 225083. 31683 Manco Control Systems for 721907. 31684 Spruce Country Computer for 185358. 31685 for the Swan Valley Consumers Pull Up. If I can get a breakdown on that one. Uh, 31686 Swan Pub Refrigeration Air Conditioning. 1603.57, 31687 for Swan River Home Hardware, uh, 1966.35, 31688 for Swan Valley Fire Board, 1343.89, 31690 Timrick Welding and Machine for 983.02, 31691 for Unibar Solutions for 16,892.44, uh, 31692 for Valley Door Systems, uh, 120596. 31693 Challenger Manufacturing for 255980. 31695 for BI Pure Water, 5173 06. Uh, 31697 for Clear Tech Industries. 496836, uh, 31698 RJM Warehousing. What are we warehousing? Uh, 42729, uh, 31701 Campbell Construction for 586950, and 31708 Dokes Bulk Fuels 76860, uh, 31711. Lou McClurg for 475 and 31715, 330 for 8666. Please. And, and what were you looking for in all those? Did you say? Explanations. Go ahead. I know I've brought that up before, but I'm sure we are to email ahead of time if we have questions and then they'd send it out prior to the meeting. If is is that is that I don't know our do we have a policy on that? There's no policy, but we've we've asked if council has questions on checks and we, we won't be able to go through all of these tonight. But obviously we, we, we send a follow up email. But we're we're also if you know the checks are listed early, if council has any questions we can get them to them before the meeting. Okay. Go ahead. Can we make policy about this then? All right, for the questions, all in favor, opposed, it's carried. Okay, we get 10.2 already, 10.3. Whereas sections 326 of the Municipal Act provides that a municipality may impose supplementary taxes and subsections 306.1 provides that a municipality may cancel or reduce taxes upon receipt of assessment alterations for matter of assessment services. Therefore, be it resolved that the assessment alterations provided for matter of assessment services on June the 3rd, 2024 be made 
for the 2024 business tax rule with a resulting increase being $9.09 and the resulting reduction being $9.09. Moved by Councillor Boychak, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 11, 11.1. 11 Resolve the bylaw 11, 2023, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to establish an accommodation tax and read a second time. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. I've reviewed the uh, accommodation tax along with the uh, admin report from our town meeting last week. So I have the following concerns. Um, second whereas statement, I'm still not clear as to what this has to do with the accommodation tax specifically. Uh, the third whereas statement, uh, I recall in our last meeting with the public that there was to be a committee that included the accommodation owners or at least a few of their representatives to be on a committee to determine how and the specific purposes for spending of the money and I don't see that represented in here. So they could give a heads and beds perspective. Uh, application of the com accommodation tax section four is still <coughs> sitting at 5% when there's been a lot of talk both on the accommodation side for feeling that is rather steep and offering suggestions for a lower rate and on our side with the uh, governance committee indicating that they thought they had a mutual um, change or amendment for this that would be more appealing to both parties. So I'm not seeing any change in the rate and nor am I also seeing any framework for how the money collected will result in more heads and beds and that was a very big conversation of the last public um, review and hearing. Uh, section 5C, um, there was the question asked then and I'm still not sure why the campground and tourist camps aren't included in the accommodation tax if they too are providing accommodations. Uh, section F, I don't agree or support with the every accommodation which is supplied and operated by employers for their employees being stricken. Uh, there was discussion from the accommodation side that 95% of their business is workers, contractors, and this will have an impact on local businesses and or residential property owners who are looking to <coughs> have to bring in contractors from outside of the area to do work. It's going to increase the cost and this has always been promoted as it's not going to have an impact on the local uh, constituency. Uh, G, 5G, the timeshare arrangement. I'm still unclear as to what that pertains to and why it is excluded if it's an accommodation um, arrangement. And also at Section F, accommodation provided by registered permanent homeless shelter. Uh, this one I think needs more conversation because the Timberland project originally started out as a project with funding for 30 days. So according to our bylaw, if that's going to qualify as an accommodation tax, then we're not directly supporting our vulnerable people and helping them to better themselves because now a portion of that funding is going to be taken away from directly serving them to paying an accommodation tax if those are the types of accommodations accounted for in the future. Your, your time has expired but I will let you continue for another minute. Uh, section 8, um, questioning whether we even have the legal right for A or B which is, well you guys can read it. Um, section 10, I believe we discussed in the last uh, public meeting that there should be a fair compensation for the administrative work to actually administer and collect this tax and it probably should 
they should be able to deduct all costs. They shouldn't have to pay out of pocket to administer a tax that the town of Swan River is going to benefit from. Uh, section 11 is have we accounted for the delay of payment for corporate accounts? So our accommodation owners had spoke to the fact that they don't they invoice and sometimes that's invoiced at the end of the month so are we accounting for that before we implement harsh um, delays and penalties uh, inspection audit and collection uh, section 14 uh, all of them uh, and 15 do we even have the legal authority to enforce any of those uh, Section in the appeals, it mentions 23 and 24, Towns Committee of Council. So what committee specifically? Uh, section late payments and other penalties. So basically 26 through 29, 32, 33. It looks to me like when I read this that we're basically taxing on a tax. We're implementing multiple consequences for the same offense. And we either need to pick one, and preferably one that we have the legal authority to enforce, but I don't think it's fair to implement multiple consequences for the same offense. And I also don't support that any quarter, which is 29, in any quarter that an operator does not remit their taxes by the due date specified in Section 8, the operator forfeits the compensation as granted. I don't think we should... If we're expecting them to do all the work to collect the tax, we should not be garnishing the cost to do that. And your, the other things time, that your time don't has expired, Councillor. Although I would recommend that you do this is second reading, so council can make that decision. Um, but I would highly recommend that you that's the points that you brought up to send those to administration so that when we're ready to go into our next call meeting, then we're prepared to see exactly what those points were that you brought up tonight. I have three last points. Okay. Thank you. Uh, with 34, there's still no framework pertaining to heads and beds and what exactly community enhancement entails. We're missing the short-term rentals, registration and enforcement. Uh, we're missing enforcement. Uh, we, there was talk before about enforcement being unpaid would be moved to property taxes. I don't see any mention of that in here anymore, so I'm just wondering where that's at and uh, whether or not we are having a lawyer review it before the reading. Okay. I do apologize to the rest of the council that I should have let somebody else go if they wanted to go before uh, council member had their second uh, chance to talk. So, uh, Deputy Mayor Memorial. Uh, just notice as to one of the points of council met with in section 10 uh, that numerical value was recommended by the committee to double from 50 to 100 dollars that's true yeah the committee recommended all the changes that you see in the, in the draft <coughs> no just saying that it says 50 dollars here yeah, yeah but we had recommended 100 dollars yeah. and it still says 50 here oh. so, so typo Typo, yeah, it should have been doubled. Yeah. Further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Okay, 11.2. Resolve the bylaw 12, 2024, being the bylaw of the town of Swan River, be read a second, a building, sorry, building bylaw of the town of Swan River, be read a second time, moved by. Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? Councillor Redwood. I have one question, and just let me call up the uh, section 8.4. The wording there, I think the point of having it moved to the um, fee schedule was to remove the actual monies within this document so we wouldn't have to update the document. So I'm wondering if we should be stopping this, basically stop it at that, the current 2024 fee schedule for the town of Swan River be amended to add a fee under the building permit fee schedule period and just remove the rest of it because that's where it speaks to what is going to be worded in the fee schedule document, but then you would be tied to having to come back and update this anytime there's an update to the fee schedule. 
where, where are you? Yeah, that's a good 8.4. 8.4, the, basically the very end. For the discussion? Go ahead. Yeah, 8.4, it's not reflecting as the discussion we had where it was to remove anything with values and dates, but just to refer to the most current fee schedule. So yeah. before, before third reading, that needs to be amended. Okay, okay. for the discussion? Yes, no. Okay, all in favor? It's carried 11.3. Resolve the bylaw number 6, 2024, being a bylaw of the Town of Swan River to provide for the regulation and control of animals within the limits of the Town of Swan River. We read it first time. Moved by Councilor Boychuk, seconded by Councilor Medwood. Discussion, Councilor Medwood. Yes, I was just rereading the report and I noticed that section 4C <coughs> um, says carry, but what I understood we agreed to is to have it been research the viability and report back to council but where the word carried is in the document it implies that we're going to leave it in and make no changes so I just wanted to uh, bring that forward um, the doc the report wasn't amended to include the missing option of to use registration versus licensing and looking into online options to facilitate that. And I don't know if admin followed up with Ainsley White, but I did cross paths with her at the post office. So I did mention how the cow meeting went and I gave her some recommendations, the same ones I mentioned here, as to if she would like to see this go further, um, what options she has with regards to reaching out to CAO Pool and uh, getting an idea of researching bylaws, et cetera, and possibly drafting a, a section for the bylaw. And then in the bylaw itself on page four, uh, section 12G, where it speaks to rabies. Uh, current standards are an initial shot, a one year booster, and then every three years after that. And I think we still have it in there as being one year, an annual shot. Just to answer uh, 4C, yes, the it does say carried, but you know, as it was stated in the cow meeting, we have to research all of the the liabilities of our, our employees carrying guns, owning guns, storing guns, everything. So it was it was to be in the bylaw as a placeholder, so we don't have to change in the future. But uh, obviously, the policies have to be uh, added and drafted in order for our bylaw officer to store, carry, withhold a tranquilizer or a actual gun. So it, it, it definitely, as stated in the cow, if we pass the bylaw as is, it doesn't mean we get a gun to our bylaw officer on Monday and we have to do the long process. Uh, the registration, almost almost the same thing. Uh, we, are, we, are, we don't have the capabilities to do that right now. Uh, council was told in the Cal meeting that that would cost on a small scale 26,000 annually, large scale 50,000 annually. Those decisions have to be made prior to <coughs> making an operational change like that. Uh, we will, this bylaw was written to, to for the enforcement of everything you read in here within our current resources. So if council wants to enhance services by doing the online registrations, we have to upgrade our our systems in order to, to do that. If we put that in the bylaw, we, we, we better do that when you're, you're committing yourself to that extra cost. Anything, uh, any further discussion? And we did contact this one to <coughs> discussion. Excellent. All in favor? It's carried. Okay, 11.4. Resolve the bylaw 14, 2024, be read a first time. Moved by Councilor Boychuk, second by Councilor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Okay. And 
resolved the pursuance to sections 152.3 of the Municipal Act. And so go on to committee and close the meeting for the public. Topics of discussion tonight is the GIS negotiation, uh, legal uh, items, of, uh, two items of legal nature. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Boycha. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Nothing, uh, nothing on camera, so we'll go straight into... Uh, Recording in progress. Go into uh, member's privilege. So I'll start with Councillor Boycha. Well, had the opportunity to uh, volunteer at the Caltire Fundraiser Barbecue for the Swan Valley Legacy Committee. Uh, it was totally overwhelming, the huge community support. Um, if you haven't had a chance to check out the video that uh, Reed Gade put up on YouTube, uh, you can see how the community came out. Um, had a wonderful time working with the other volunteers. It was an absolutely beautiful day. It was a huge success. I want to thank uh, Dean and Brad at Caltire and all the Swan Valley Legacy volunteers and their annual volunteers that come out every year, as well as all the local businesses for their generous donations for prizes. And uh, yeah, it was pretty exciting to be there. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I'm still suffering a sunburn from my neck and every <laughs> And you're in the shade. <laughs> yeah. no, uh, Deputy Mayor Morio. Um, a couple of things. Um, as it was mentioned uh, by Ms. Campana earlier, there's some milestones um, being written. So congratulations on graduation and uh, turning 18. So after that, then you are eligible to become a full-fledged counselor, not mm. a student counselor, once you buy property in town. <laughs> Uh, for it, she's um, right after that. But also, there is uh, there is another milestone that's uh, going to occur on Thursday. Is that His Worship's uh, first child will also be graduating, uh, so that'll be a first uh, for His Worship. And then he's uh, understanding he's actually learning the complexities of uh, uh, booking university courses and university life. So uh, congratulations on that. I'm sure it's a learning experience. So uh, don't forget that because I'll be giving that information. Later on, myself because I've never myself. Hopefully, get simpler by that. <laughs> yeah. um, and then I'm uh, looking forward to next week's AMM uh, district meeting here. Um, from what I've seen so far, it looks like uh, very well. Um, hopefully, we'll see the uh, resolutions come forward uh, for debate um, shortly. Um, but then also for the council and everybody out there that's just wondering, uh, you may have seen a newer type different type of aircraft coming at the airport. Um, it's a single engine turboprop white aircraft out there. Um, that is actually the aircraft uh, and program that is replacing the light flight program in Manitoba. Um, the start, traditionally, when, remember when the jet was coming through here, the, the red and white, um, then it transitioned to STARS, which uh, was either the helicopter or the flight crew um, catching a ride on a contractor's King Air twin engine. Uh, the province has entered into an agreement with Kiwaiton Air uh, for aircraft to provide the uh, aircraft for uh, a shared health life flight crew uh, to provide the critical um, transports for healthcare uh, in the province. So that's why people have noticed and have been asking what's that plain white aircraft at the airport all the time. But yeah, that's so that traditionally replaces the, the jet that used to come here. That's the new um, program. So um, based on that contract, that was uh, a contract that probably signed with the province um, to provide five <coughs> at any given time for medevacs. Uh, you urge medevac. That does replace the, the non-urgent medevacs like that you see uh, the printer aircraft, the, the bigger one with the two engines that comes in. So that will still occur, but this is one looks after the, the critical emergent stuff. The plate is? Uh, the white one, that is the Pilatus PC-12, um, like which will, which it has the ambulance conversion in it. So, and that's all. Okay, perfect, thank you. Councilor Powell. Okay, just a couple things. Um, the AGM for the library, that's the anybody's around, and they, and they can make it. It's June 24th, just for another reminder, and it should be good. Um, I also attended the Caltire Barbecue and truly amazing to see the amount of community support that comes out. People you don't even, even 
don't ever see, you know? It's just, it was really, really amazing. So we had a great time. Uh, our mayor, maybe sitting at the front, talked a little much, a little bit, <laughs> kind of held up a line. So we're, we're, we're going to put him on the, on the back next time. Oh, so, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It was great. It was really, really great. Um, another big thing is on June May 1st, on, on Friday, uh, we have our uh, the great big uh, Indigenous Day, and then it starts at 5 a.m., so I challenge you to show up at 5 a.m., and we'll make sure you have pancakes and sausage afterwards, but then we also have the evening thing, which is um, what starts at 5, and that's going to be all the dancing and everything that goes on there, so see you at 5. <laughs> Done it a couple times. Yeah. How's the 5 a.m.? 5 a.m. Good luck with that. Uh, it's just, everything that you guys are all talking about is, is so, so special when you think of the legacy, the legacy committee bonding with Caltire and the corporate community support. 900 plus attendees. So, and the money goes back into the community, as I understand it. Much of it's going to go to the arena. Mm -hmm. It's pretty nice. Simultaneously, the kids that did something quite similar shortly thereafter with their lobster fest. Mm -hmm. And all that money will be going back to the community. So two wonderful things in the uh, Swan Lake Watership, uh, Eddie Shaw and Councillor Bobbock's team had, I think, a couple 400 kids up at the Interpretive Center teaching them all about water and water management and bird identification, so it's pretty significant stuff. And on a smaller scale, the immigrant service team had a barbecue uh, where all the, many of the immigrant people were out and David Minish uh, catered pizzas to those people and I want to thank him and those guys <coughs> for getting together. A uh, small thing, a uh, constituent, con constituent concern about Minbo's signing is she asked for some phone numbers of the people out there, so I gave her that. <coughs> good for us to know them, so she asked for that. And a very significant day, uh, obviously Father's Day passed since our last meeting, so those of us who are fathers, congratulations, and those young ones will become job security in the teaching world, or maybe counselors. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilor Meadow. Okay, well, thank you very much, Dominga, for being part of our council, student councillor. Hopefully you'll have luck uh, getting somebody else to join us, because it's always good to see the youth getting to know things. Uh, you know what, I don't even know if there was an opportunity when I was in school to do such a thing, but it uh, might have been nice, might have been nice. Uh, congratulations to all the graduates, that's coming up on Thursday, so good luck with the future. Uh, kudos to our bylaw officer. I'm sure he's been pretty busy between all the rain and the enough sunshine to get things growing to keep on top of some of those un new unsightly and structures, the lawns, weeds, that kind of stuff. So uh, kudos to him. Uh, I did actually attend the uh, Minish's pizza night for the immigrant services and immigrants, and there was I think upwards of 70 people. I went through. He has an amazing setup. Uh, food was good. Company was good. It was uh, great to attend. Uh, actually, CAO Pool and I volunteered last year at the Cal Tire, so it is very, uh, yeah, to see the numbers and the volumes. And I think this year was a record-setting one, but I think last year was the record to be broken. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, amazing to see how the community comes out to support. And just uh, Birch River Pool opens July 2nd, and the Bozeman Lions Club will be hosting a barbecue lunch on that particular day. I think they have some, a variety of different <coughs> events for the grand opening week, but July 2nd is their first day to open. And tomorrow is the CMHA barbecue from 11 to 2 at the co-op parking lot. Lots of barbecues. Uh, CFO Ganita. Uh, just to say that uh, when a, several people talk at the same time, I can't understand what anybody's saying. So if people could talk one at a time, it would be good. Okay. Try to keep an eye on that. <clears throat> uh, anything further? No? Okay. Uh, student Councillor Campana. Um, well, um, it was really nice to see Mr. Lahan today because he used to be my teacher. Um, I only really took the graphic design courses because I thought it was a cool day. And 
Yeah, it was, it was good to see him getting, well, you know, he's super involved in the community. Yes, yes. Yeah. So it's, you know, we'll see that in action. Um, I guess, you know, looking beyond the, beyond this, my, I'm going to be uh, moving to, to Brandon uh, to study anthropology. Um, I don't know what kind of future that's going to give me, but I'm, I'm really excited for it, either way. <laughs> and um, not much to say. I mean, I said most of what I wanted to say earlier. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I had a lot of fun today here. It was pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. Well, we, we enjoyed that. Or we liked the fact that you enjoyed it and it was in maybe take something away from it. As uh, Councilor Powell said, uh, the uh, sunrise uh, ceremony at 5.30, so when your safe ground is all over, you'll just walk straight over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, no, and, I, and I wanted to ask, like, where, where is that being held? At the Friendship Center. Friendship Center. Yeah, right at the Friendship Center. So. <coughs> right. Yeah. So I'm not going to be there. Messages doesn't support the group Friendship Center at the Friendship Center. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know what where that's all about. Where does that come from? <laughs> all right, well, thank you again. And uh, all the best to you, and uh, we're this all takes you. Uh, have a great day off the day. It's going to be an hectic day. I am hoping a good kind of hectic day. Yeah. See you, Paul. This may be done already, but just a reminder to the to organize some speakers for the town resolutions at the AM district meeting. Taken right. by that, we've already yeah. covered it. Traditionally, uh, Someone from the resolutions chair moves it, and then someone can second it. Yeah. So I can second the one I brought forward if Councillor Boychuk wants to bring the second, and then we can each speak to Perfect. that. So yeah. then hopefully, in, before the resolutions comes, we can twist a few arms to have a few other supporters. But, yeah. Or let or let them know what it actually is versus. Mm -hmm. so. Good. Perfect. Just to mention, uh, and then some honorable mentions. Uh, I know the His Worship told me about uh, some discussions with the Neighborhood Community Watch Program, and they had a lot of really good things to say about our bylaw officers, so I just want to commend Derek Pewish for the job that he does welcoming them in. In comparison to other communities, uh, that does not happen, so the town is doing a good job assisting the, the Neighborhood Community Watch in, in their surveillance efforts. <coughs> Excuse me. And also we met with the EMO, uh, the new rep for our region, plus the, their boss out of Winnipeg. And, and they did commend the town of Swan River and Council for how detailed our EMO plan is. They're pretty impressed. Good. So kudos to Matt Lanick. That was like the officer on that. Sorry. That's it. Okay. Not much more from me, like Cal Tire Barbecue, that was hot fun. That was, I thought it would be a lot of fun. Yes, I probably did them. I talked to everybody, but that's just me. You know, so anyways, it was lots of fun. And, and congratulations to the Legacy Group and, 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 and being part of that. <coughs> so, and the whole volunteers, oh my gosh, it was just incredible. I talked to Dean about it the other day, and, and he just said it's just grown so much. And, when they start, I think, for, with one deep fire, I think now they have like three or whatever there now, or six. six, okay, six, and it's just quite a production line, but everybody knows what to do, and they do the work, and, and they uh, they get it done, and a lot of people are very happy with that. But the AMM, uh, Parkland meeting next uh, Tuesday, like I said, we're all looking forward to that. Uh, we have, uh, I should say, the municipal relations minister will not be attending, and neither will be Mr. Gray, unfortunately. Uh, they had other uh, things that they had to attend because of graduations and all that, too. But Minister Weed will be here, and some of his staff, and also our good friend Michael Kelly will also be coming to visit us as well. So it'll be nice to see uh, Mike uh, come up to Swan River and, uh, and visit with us, and I'm sure he has some questions for Councillor White. So, uh, and other than that, yeah, graduation is, is crazy. You're thinking about these people when they're little people and, and then all of a sudden, before you know it, they're, they're graduating and it's quite a thing to go through. So we're looking forward to it. Yeah, we learned quite a bit in, in this whole process of the transition of the birds flying away, I guess you can say. So anyway, a little, hard, little harder on my wife than me, so but anyway. Uh, just to your, your comment and others about the, uh, the Caltire barbecue, and 
doing it in conjunction with the legacy of security. And how is it expanded this year so much more above and beyond what it was last year with the volumes? Hopefully that's a key indicator of knowing that the legacy community and where what project it was supporting and that, that community is getting that's a, an indicator that the community is getting behind that project. Um, hopefully it might be just speculation, but I see it as a good sign that mm -hmm. um, knowing where those funds are going and the seeing that dramatic jump from one year to the next that um, it's a good indicator that the community's behind that project. Hopefully. Yeah. Mm -hmm. good. All right, well, with that, uh, we'll move towards adjournment. So, the result of this regular meeting of council now be adjourned at 9 46 p.m. Moved by Councillor Midwood, seconded by Councillor Foychuk. All in favor? It's carried. We're adjourned.